The largest carnivorous land animal today is the polar bear. As you all know, there have been countless predators in Earth's past that dwarfed this alabaster behemoth, and many of them were also bears. However, what of the evolutionary history of our most terrifying earthen seal butcher? Well, not much is widely known, but there is one single bone on Earth in London that tantalizes the minds of those who know about it. So, let's get a handle on London's killer polar bear. The evolutionary history of bears is extremely well understood. There are many extinct subspecies, species, and genera that paint a very pretty picture of how we got to the diversity of honey munchers, berry pickers, and carcass carvers with us today. However, one lineage definitely needs some help in the transitional form department. The oldest polar bears are known from rock deposits dating back as much as 130,000 years ago. But genetic studies have shown that they are much older. Many recent analyses have found that polar bears share a common ancestor with brown bears as much as a million years ago, with the two groups interbreeding many times as glaciers advanced and retreated until the end of the last glacial maximum or ice age. Despite all this, no fossils exist of distinct polar bear species or subspecies that directly lead into the currently only valid species, Ursus maritimus maritimus. In the mid-1800s, construction workers were laying down railway for the Hounslow Loop Line in southwest London. By 1849, the workers had made it to the town of Brentford, which was opposite of the town of Kew across the Thames, connected only by the Kew Bridge. This work required road cuts to be made, and that resulted in the excavation of a bunch of Ice Age fossils roughly dating to the early Vicellian or Vurm stages of the late Pleistocene, around 70,000 years ago. Many of these bones ended up in the collection of antiquarian and real estate developer Thomas Layton including a rather large fossil ulna belonging to some form of bear. This ulna remained in Leighton's collection until it was donated to the Natural History Museum in London, where it resides to this day, at some point known as BM number 24361 and now as PVOR 24361. This ulna was simply labeled as belonging to an ancient form of brown bear, Ursus arctos. A little under a half century after it was discovered, it would be rediscovered by a paleontologist who thought it might indicate something far more chilling. In the mid-1960s, Finnish fossil nerd Bjorn Kurten was doing a study on the evolution of the polar bear. To do this, he had to look back through all the literature to see what fossil specimens had been found of these animals. As stated before, not much exists, so even less existed back in the 60s. There's a confirmed chunk of the back of a jaw of a polar bear from Ice Age Denmark, a right femur from Sweden of the same age, two skulls from the Yoldia clay of Sweden, and a handful of subfossil bones from Udivala. Curtain worked the London Ulna specimen into his project, which he published in Acta Zoologica Fenica in 1964. Based on all of the anatomical traits he describes in this ulna and its size, he thought it must have belonged to a subspecies or population distinct from Ursus maritimus, so he came up with the name Ursus maritimus tyrannus to refer to this animal. The ulna is nearly complete, only missing the very end of one of the joints. This made Curtin suspect the animal was not fully skeletally mature when it died since bones tend to start fusing together more when an animal matures. The ulna measures 48.5 centimeters, 19 inches in length when the missing piece is filled in. This bone was compared to the same bone from a polar bear that died at a roughly similar age, and the Q-bridge ulna was 13.3% longer. Let's bring in Mr. Man from Animal Planet's The Most Extreme. Real quick, shall we? 
An ulna of this size might equate to an animal with a shoulder height of between 122 and 134 centimeters, 48 and 52.7 inches, which is get dang huge, but not quite larger than modern polar bears, which stand at 130 to 160 centimeters, 51 to 63 inches at the shoulder. However, we have to keep in mind that it's thought this ulna belonged to a subadult, so perhaps a full adult or elder of this subspecies may have reached nastier heights. Thanks, Mr. Man. So yeah, a real big mysterious British polar bear. Sure, it's not the largest by any means, but it's definitely a lot closer to the large size of polar bears than the average polar bear, and it was still growing. Not exactly worth the cool subspecies name, though. You know what sucks a little more about this bear? It might not actually be that special. When the funny bone was found, it was thought to be a big brown bear. And then, Curtin took another look at it and thought it might belong to a polar bear. Even in the paper in which he describes it as a polar bear, he plays devil's advocate like a proper scientist. Sure, the bone shares some traits with the same bone in polar bears, but it also shares some traits with the same bone in brown bears. We also already know that polar bears and brown bears share a close ancestry. The faunal assemblage from the rock unit that plopped out the supposed polar bear bone doesn't seem to share any of the types of animals that typically live with polar bears. Polar bears are cold climate species, it's in the name. However, the majority of the critters found in the same layers as the fossil are all interglacial forest animals. Hyenas, hippos, deer, giant elk, aurochs, bison, and elephants. These critters are not found in the far north. This would help to point towards the fossil not belonging to a polar bear. Sure, it's definitely possible that this individual was a singular vagrant polar bear from up north. After all, it was glaciation time. And that would have meant there was a lot more land for animals to cover, and glaciers would have connected places that are no longer connected today. Plus, global temperatures were far nippier. That being said, if this were a common enough occurrence to be fossilized and be found by people, you'd think fossils like this would be found more often. Yet, this is basically the only one found. Curtain pointed to a gotcha here. He said that another researcher let him know that the London Natural History Museum had a bunch of undescribed reindeer fossils from the same area around Kew as the polar bear bone. The presence of reindeer here would definitely help to infer that the area was cooler and contained animals that were more adapted for the cold, helping to not entirely rule out polar bears. Unfortunately for the validity of Ursus Maritimus Tyrannus though, it seems as though other paleontologists at the London Natural History Museum have already reanalyzed the bone and found that an identity of brown bear does make more sense. Being said, none of these experts have yet to officially publish anything on this, so the identity of this large anomalous bear remains fuzzy. What do you think? Prehistoric polar bears and transitional bears exist out there. Will you be the next to brave the cold to get to the rocky outcrops or archaeological sites to find them? For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.